guys after subscribing to this channel please make sure that you also press the bell icon so that no notification no new video of mine any educational video is missed by anybody moving on to the question number two that tells you now this is one question i think it has been asked before and my answer which i remember to make that time was not so good but this time the answer that i've made is exactly you know uh the one which uh, should be answered for principles of hormonal replacement therapy. I think pre previously it was some measures of hormone replacement, something like that was there. Uh, principles of hormone replacement therapy probably was not asked or something like this was asked before. But this is actually the me meaning of principles of hormone. At that time, even I was, you know, searching from various books, trying to make an answer for you people so that it's easy. And at the same time, you know, very um, uh, memorable. Did the moment you read it, you know that, oh, this is the approach. My idea to make your answers is to make an approach uh, for you people that suppose something like this comes ever in your exam. These are the headings under which you will answer. Like, remember in my last class, I told you if the management is asked, this is the heading you have to tell you. If you've got, if a procedure is asked, what, what headings do you have to give? Remember? So mostly, and, and the short notes, they're coming either on the procedure or on, um, let's say, uh, a vaccine or on um, uh, management though, you have a five to eight mark question on that or seven mark question on that. So mo mostly on this, right? Uh, then you have the uh, principles of uh, hormone replacement therapy. Here I'm talking about how do you go for, what do you understand by the principles of hormone replacement therapy? You, first of all, you have to understand that everybody, there is an individualized approach. Uh, now, describing the principles of uh, HRT, what you have to remember is the approach to it, okay? So first of all, it's going to be uh, a very individualized. First of all, you have to decide what the patient is like. What is the, uh, the profile of the patient? Why are we giving? What is the reason for giving this person? You have to start right from the assessment of the patient, okay? What are the risk factors? What are the comorbidities? What is the patient per se, all right? Then about a personalized plan about this particular patient to you what exactly are the specific needs see these these are certain buzzwords you know this one assessment of the patient's condition number one what are the needs of the patient number two this is the principle how will you guide a person to give a hormone replacement therapy problem with us to write an answer on hrt uh, is that uh, we in india we are not giving a lot of uh, hrt right even in my institute, there was a menopausal clinic, right? But uh, the approach to give HRT was very, um, what do I say, guarded, right? So um, we do not have a lot of experience in this in this particular field. But when it comes to writing an answer, it's a completely different thing. This is what you would have to think about. So you have to assess the patient. What is his medical condition? What is the specific, what does he want? Is she having heart flushes? Is she having... Um, uh, problems in uh, her sexual life or she's having a lot of uh, sleep loss what exactly is it right so then you have to think about a personalized plan for that then you have to talk about the benefits versus risk so you know that the, there are definite benefits right so it alleviates the menopausal symptoms right that is the benefit but it also comes with a lot of risks like breast cancer cardiovascular events so on and so forth right wait wait let me just mark it for you most important being breast cancer, right? Then you have, of course, the cardiovascular events. Then you have um, these. Yeah, this is mostly the risk profile of your uh, HRT. Breast cancer, the thromboembolism, gallbladder disease, and endometrial hyperplasia. Just remember that. Then you have to decide about the types of hormones. Estrogen, progesterone, estrogen, progesterone combined, what? And then comes the root, right? So this types of hormones and then comes the root. Sorry, wait. This one is the root. This is the type, the types of hormones. I had, I wanted to write this thing down. The types of hormones, one, and the root of administration. Wait, I'll just tell you that. Right. So till then, you know that it's either estrogen alone. You can give estrogen alone as well. If there is the uterus is not there, you can give estrogen alone. If at all the uterus is there, you have to give estrogen progesterone together. And then comes even the root, which should be coming over here. Yeah. Orally, transdermally. 
Okay, let's put it like that. This is the root. And then, of course, how do you go ahead with monitoring? Well, this is also one of the uh, part of uh, principles of HRT. But yes, uh, in that case, you can just put it down as one of the points. Regular evaluation, health checkups, right? Duration and discontinuation. Then yes, of course, if it's a short term use or a long term use, that will also be the consideration for us. For example, uh, short term management is usually suggested. Right, but with women with high risk of osteoporosis, might benefit with a long term, you know, uh, use of HRT. So these were the principles. This question, the straw. If you people were have, you know, were there in the class which I took on menopause at that time, I said this question has never been asked, and I don't think it's going to be asked again. But to my surprise, it was asked, and I included it in my notes. It was very much there, and I gave you a short snippet, a sneak peek into this. What exactly straw is? I never thought it was going to be ever asked, but they did ask because it was a very old uh, this thing stage of menopause. I think it came out in no, 2017 or 16, and but they have asked it right right now. So these people in D and D they can do anything, and we got to be prepared for it. So it's good that it was included in one of my notes. No matter how much you want to avoid it, you will still go through it, right? So this is straw. It actually gives you a sneak peek into understanding the stages of menopause. So menopause doesn't outrightly come like that, right? So you have uh, a reproductive age, okay, which is you know the early peak and late, right? Then you have uh, the menstrual cycles. You know the first variable to regular, then the regular, then the mostly regular, and then you have a menopausal transition, right? Which is called the perimenopausal phase. So minus two, minus one, they're given, and then it is a Proper post menopause, early and late, plus one, plus two, right? That's straw. This one chart is sufficient, okay? And you don't have to buy hard because it's a very easy chart, right? So minus four, minus three, minus five, minus four, minus three is reproductive, early, peak, late, and then uh, your perimenopause is early, late, minus two, minus minus one, and then of course when you go into post menopause, you have plus one, plus two, early and late, right? Now. Uh, discuss the management of a 52-year-old postmenopausal female uh, who has reported to you with a history of hot flushes, and how will you manage this patient? So again, again, when a management comes, you have to write down the right from the history. What what history do you, are you expecting from a menopausal lady who's reported to you with hot flushes? You've already told what exactly she means. So medical history, you have to take whether she's having any other risk factors or not. What is the other concern apart from hot flushes? Correct. Hot flushes. How often they are coming? How distressing they are? Whether she has to get up from sleep? Is her sleep also disturbed? Any other comorbidities apart from this uh, this problem alone? Any other complaints apart from that she's having? Stuff stuff like that. Physical examination. You have to examine her overall health. You have to focus on those particular points which will benefit or get uh, severe with the with the HRT being given. Right. You have to talk about her. Other conditions like breast changes, weight gain, vaginal atrophy as well. And you then have to do a proper laboratory examination, laboratory test, which include not just the test for menopause alone, but the ones which all which do a complete health uh, checkup for the patient, which include, of course, the you know the BP check and the lipid profile, the you know KLFTs, KFTs, apart from of course FSH and hormonal status for the menopause. Then you talk about always, always start from the conservative management to the, you know, a proper management. So non-pharmacological methods of lifestyle modifications, dietary changes, right? Maybe probably some herbal medicines, uh, regular exercise. Then go on to the proper HRT. Here is the route of administration. This is what I remembered in that question. All right. So alone or combined route of administration. The, the contraindications, risk versus benefit for this particular patient, then certain non-hormonal uh, options, maybe SSRIs, SNRIs are very good, you know, when you cannot use estrogen alone. It's basically more for, uh, you know, mood upsets or, you know, depressive issues, you know, that ways it, it really helps. Then vaginal estrogen therapy is very good if she's having just vaginal atrophy or a sexual discomfort, right? Herbal remedies, you can try for all those patients who are very, uh, you know, keen on not trying the hormone per se, or they want a, uh, some other substitutes for a proper uh, replacement therapy for uh, this uh, problem of hot flushes or any other uh, menopausal problems. Now, 